you, Hans. Um, to match the challenges of the century, uh, we need both long-term vision and uh, immediate action. And we cannot wait until 2050 is at the doorstep fact on climate neutrality as if we are cramming for an exam at last moment. And we cannot leave the responsibility and consequences um, of climate change to the next generations. So the climate target plan we present today is not just a plan to cut emissions faster and cheaper, um, it is also a plan for transforming the way we produce, consume and transport energy across all sectors of our economy. The energy sector has a key role to play in achieving the 55% reduction in greenhouse gases as it is um, accounting for 75% of EU emissions. And by 2030, electrification needs to reach 30%. The rate of building renovation has to double. The share of renewables in transport needs to reach around 24%. And oil consumption has to go down by almost a third and gas consumption by a quarter. So we know that each of these mean massive change, but our careful assessment shows that it is doable. Europe's power generation sector is already the most decarbonized in the world. And now we need to focus on transforming all sectors, transport and buildings in particular. And more than a third of emissions come from buildings, especially their heating and cooling. And there is a huge potential in improving the energy efficiency of houses. So this is why in less than a month, the Commission will come out uh, with a renovation wave initiative. In the transport sector, we need to tackle every angle strengthening the CO2 standards for vehicles, making clean fuels such as hydrogen more accessible, investing heavily in infrastructure and deploying smart traffic management system. And my good colleague Adina Valean is working on the sustainable and smart mobility strategy that will cover all these strands of work. And together with the climate target plan, the college adopted the assessment of the national energy and climate plans today. So I want to thank all the member states for their efforts over two years. Each of them now has a forward-looking um, blueprint for clean energy transformation and investment. And our assessment of those plans shows that, based on existing policies, we will overachieve our current 2030 greenhouse gas reduction target of at least 40%. Uh, the picture is especially encouraging when we look at renewables we are global technological leaders, and the price of renewable energy in Europe is steadily falling. The NSCP assessment projects that we are on track to produce more than 33% of our energy from renewable sources with existing policies. So this is beyond the current 2030 target of at least 32%. And we are going to build on that success and also the market momentum by coming out with the offshore energy strategy later this year. The EU is also moving away from coal. The majority of the member states have either already phased out coal or set a specific deadline for doing so. And by 2030, the use of coal would decrease by 70%. Today, we also gave a further push to green energy. Uh, the Commission adopted the EU Renewable Energy Financing Mechanism that allows countries where producing renewable energy is challenging to pool resources and invest in member states with abundant wind and sun. The NSPs also reveal where, where there are greater challenges. And for example, in energy efficiency, there is still a gap of about 3% to reach our current ta target of 32.5%. But there is also new interest in the topic. And our innovation wave, eco-design and energy efficiency first initiatives will help us to use that momentum. There are still 40 million Europeans that struggle to keep their homes warm during a um, heating period. And this is unacceptable. While renovation can reduce energy bills, the policies have to be designed in a way that makes it also possible for the less privileged to take the advantage of them. And we will provide guidance to the Member States this year on addressing energy poverty. 
the national plans were, of course, prepared with the current 2030 target in mind. And to reach the 55% goal, we will need to do more. So the impact assessment foresees um, the need for a 38 to 40% share of renewables in our energy mix and 36 to 39% improvement in our energy efficiency. In the climate target plan, we commit to, re to reviewing the renewable energy and energy efficiency di directives, including their targets by next June. A change of this magnitude requires serious investment and additional 350 billion euros per year, and NSPs will have a crucial role to play here, um, as they will provide input for the recovery and resilience plans and just transition plans of the member states. And I encourage all EU countries to take advantage of the unprecedented funding opportunities available under the next generation EU and the long-term EU budget. And I'm happy to see that member states from France to Lithuania have already made green investment a central part of the recovery strategy. Many of the choices we need to take um, are tough. Uh, moving from 40% to 55 doesn't just mean changing a figure on the paper. It means real impact on people and businesses. Uh, but we have the will, the technology, and the resources, and still enough time to become climate neutral by 2050. And every year, the EU gives away 50 billion euros in the form of fossil fuel subsidies. This is roughly the same amount of money we invest annually in wind and solar energy and energy infrastructure. So this is one example of where we need to rethink and reset. But Europe has proved time and again that we are capable of doing just that. Thank you.